Okay guys, um, I'm going to do a quick demo on how to start your charcoal portrait. And what you want to do is begin with a sheet. I'm going to use a bristle board. This might be a little smooth, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Uh, otherwise, you can just use regular drawing paper. All right. Um, so to begin with, you want to start with just your basic oval shape. You know, think of an egg like upside down with the tapered end at the bottom, All right? So you've got this upside down egg. Uh, find an axis line, just do just sort of eyeball a straight line down the middle. And this is to hinge all your features off of. And before you even start, you know, divide the oval into two halves. Find the halfway point bring that line across. Okay, in the next step, you wanna look for the position of the nose. So uh, if you divide this again one more time, find the halfway point. No need to use a ruler, just kind of eyeball it. And that will give you the bottom of the nose. All right, you guys will be using photographs, so I'm just doing this out of my head. All right, so uh, to find the middle of the mouth, you then divide this in half again, find the midway point between the nose and the chin. And uh, that will give you roughly the average formula for the mouth, okay? So you got the position of the eyes halfway between the top of the oval and the chin. will give you the eyes. And then you divide that in half. Halfway between the eyes and the chin will give you the nose, the bottom part of the nose. And then you divide this in half again. Now roughly, this looks a little higher, but, you know, it could change. Gives you the middle of the mouth. So we're, we're set to go as far as the positioning of the features. Now, to, um, to find out the spacing of the eyes, a good rule of thumb is one eye length, okay? And depending on, if this is a life-size head, it's probably maybe an inch and a quarter or a little over an inch for the distance between the eyes. So it's one eye length. You, almost like you're, <laughs> I guess you're drawing a, a cyclops. You put that third eye in the middle there. That gives you the distance between your two eyes. All right, so now I know where to put the left eye and the right. All right, so that gives you that. You don't need this third eye anymore, so you can kind of erase as you go. All right, do that. All right, so that's roughly the positioning. You got the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. All right, and so what I'm gonna do next is I will start positioning where the nose is at. Just draw a little circle there for the mid part of the nose. Outer flare. Little area underneath the nose and you've got this, I guess what it's called is a cupid's bow, a little indentation underneath the nose. I'm just sort of marking my features at this point. Um, don't forget, you do have eyebrows too, so you wanna kind of rough in your shapes eyebrows and you get the um, positioning of those all right let's get the I like to use this as a marker for the upper lip so that'll be the upper lip marker this will be the middle uh, part of the lip down and up it's the upper lip and thickness of the lower lip should be right about there Okay, so there you go. Got the eyes, nose, and mouth. Now let's finish off the eyes. I do have, uh, this would be the top of the eye. You definitely want to like, get the eyelid in there. Okay, you got the tear duct. And the, the iris in the pupil is next. Okay, just kind of rough that in. Let's get this other eye in, tear duct there. All right. And the pupil, don't forget the pupil. Middle of the eye right there. Uh, this would basically be the darkest part, so if I were to put a highlight, put it on the left, and then that will allow me to fill in the pupil. All right, so put that in now to get it going. 
Okay, so we got the features. Now we can map out the structure of the face. Start with the temple. Get a little cheekbone in there. You got a jawline and then a chin. Okay, this goes across, down and up. And so we got that going. And next thing you want to know, you want to put in the neck. A little taper to the neck there. Ears. Looking at the ears from the front. Okay, slide this across. You can kind of level it roughly the same height. Make your adjustments. Okay, now we can start putting in the hair, so it's just wrapped in the hair. Now the hair is going to be a little bit more body to it, so you can just kind of rough in the shape. This is a female, by the way. And just kind of establish the rhythm of where the hair would go. We don't need to see the top of the oval. We already have that marker where her hair is at. All right, and then from here on, you can start tightening up your features. So we got, let's get the eyebrows back in there. So we get the eyebrows. And eyelashes, okay. one rest of the iris in there okay there you go so you can kind of see the face taking shape now we can start the sh the shading you go back in clean up your smudge marks Guidelines that you don't need anymore. You can uh, you can also use the white eraser if they're a little stubborn, and pull out and clean up all the smudge marks. It's a very messy medium, so you know don't panic. A lot of these restatements or extra lines will come in handy later on uh, and add a little bit of character to your drawing, despite being a little messy. Okay, so we're just cleaning it up. We got all the features good to go there. All right, so now you wanna get into the shading of the hair, uh, depending on the color of the hair. If you were to make her, uh, let's say, blonde, uh, you would you know, make the background much, much darker. So um, let's go ahead and, and uh, assume that she'll be more of a brunette. So I'm going to go ahead and take the stick. You don't use this on directly on the, on the face. You just kind of tap into this. When you get into the shading of the face, you use your finger, right? But I'm going to put it directly on the hair so you can just kind of block in the hair where the hair is going. Just kind of take your stick, get it in there. And she has dark brunette hair. Okay, and now I'm going to take the tissue and smooth out that texture. Just kind of rub it out a little bit. Make sure you're very careful not to go into the face yet. And just to bring all the attention back to the face, we're going to neutralize this, this white background. So I'm going to pull a little bit of this black uh, into the background, but I'm still going to try and keep it lighter than the hair. 
All right, so there you go. So we got a neutralized white background. Now, as, as, if you notice, your attention goes back to the white. The white is your strongest value, so it's gonna attract the most attention. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit more here because we're gonna tap into this black with our finger now to get some of the shadow. Now, at this point, you may wanna, it's a little messy, so you may wanna tap this out, shake it over a trash can or something and get some of that dust out. Uh, also, you want to sort of go back in, trim off stuff just to even things out. Her cheek is just a little fatter on this side than it is on this side, so I'm gonna See if I can fix that. Just so that things are a little bit more even. All right, so we can do those. Okay, and then this is where you t start taking your, your finger and smudge into the face. So uh, as soon as you start doing that, you'll start to see uh, things start to look a little bit more realistic. Try to keep in mind, you know, where the shadows are in your picture, and then you just kind of repeat that into your drawing. If you notice, when I'm smudging, I'm kind of following the form somewhat, so you can get the shadow. The shadow, it can also be the equivalent to the color of the skin. You know, if you notice I'm going around forms on the face, cheekbones protrude out a little bit, so you want to kind of smudge around that. Uh, details like the eyelids, There's some shadow there. Okay, it may get a little uh, messy, so you know when you see niches that you want to get rid of, you can always use go back, use the eraser, and just try to clean things up a little bit. I put a little piece of paper underneath my hand. All right, yeah, just kind of redefine some of those lines that you've rubbed out always helps uh, and you can also use the pencil to tighten up some of the, the tighter darks that you can't get into with your finger all right um, some artists will use uh, what's called smudge sticks that's to get into those tight areas now it's it's still a little rough in terms of the smudging um, and a way to kind of smooth things out, let's, let's, let's get a little bit more shadow on the face here. And then I'll show you what I mean by how you can kind of clean things up. Because it is kind of rough. And what you do is you use the tissue and along with the eraser, of course. And uh, just kind of use this as another smudging tool you can use, all right? And it just kind of helps, takes out some of the smudges that were created with your, you know, you've got some oils in your hand, you're gonna need to smooth things out. So the, the tissue actually helps with that. Add some shadow to the neck.
in. You know, feel free to use the eraser to clean up your lines. Pull out highlights that you've lost. And uh, learn to utilize the eraser as, as a drawing tool, putting in your highlights. Okay, so what I want to show you next is how to utilize the eraser to do the hair. So what I do is I'll take this out, use the edge, the sharp edge of the eraser, and just kind of pull it on your drawing and you can get several nice highlight effects, so to speak, that you can start adding to your line work, okay? So this is all, and then at the same time, you wanna still go back in, so it's not just highlights, it, it'll look like um, streaks that you can rub out where, the, where some of these highlights go back into the shadows. Okay, there you go. And in addition to that, of course, just kinda add more line work. Kind of mix it up. Line smudging, eraser, and basically what that will do is give you somewhat of a very kind of natural effect to your line work. Okay, and there you go. A little quick demo on the charcoal portrait. All right, you could, again, you can make it as dark as, as you want uh, in regards to the reference photo you're using. And, um, you know, everywhere you see it darker in the photo, you repeat that in your drawing. You just keep pushing your darks more and more. Still got some streaks in the eyes. I'm trying to try and clean that up. I don't want to rest my hand on the face, so I'm gonna put a little tissue down. Go back in, fine tune the eyes just a little bit more. You add a lash or two, both sides, pupils. You could just kind of hint at the eyelashes. You don't have to count every single one. All right. Again. You can, go, you can go back in and tighten up a lot of the details with the pencil even more, uh, just to make it look even more realistic. charcoal sketch. Um, again, keep track of the positioning of your features, that sort of half-half and half formula I gave you, and you should be able to pull this off. There you go. Good luck. <laughs>